I uh, want to welcome those who are watching by Facebook. God bless you. Uh, I saw the other day we had a, a viewer from Uganda. So we have Uganda, we have India, we have China, we have Nigeria, and we're starting to reach out. And God's just touching the nations, you know, and so I praise God for that. Amen. I was reading this today, and the Lord started speaking to my heart. I want you to put on there for me on the HCSB, I think it's called, version. Um, Psalm 106. Psalm 106. God was really speaking to me about how this psalm reflects a lot of what's happening in the local churches today. So first we're going to start off and we're going to just ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we ask that your blessing be on your word tonight and upon your servant. I pray, Father, that you will open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear, to see, and to know with understanding what you are trying to say to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. The psalm starts out with first, hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Isn't that true? It's a great psalm to begin with, but this psalm is talking about the nation of Israel and their proneness to rebellion. That many, many times Israel was falling into sin and into different things and, and how God, so merciful, would come back and help them and bring them uh, back to him. Verse 2. Who can declare the Lord's mighty acts or proclaim all the praise that is due him? You could not begin to praise God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, month after month, year after year, wouldn't even be enough. 24-7 would not be enough for the amount of praise that is due to him. In fact, if you and I could see in the spiritual realm, you would see times that God intervened and saved your life. Or God intervened and saved you from going down the wrong pathway. Even before you were a Christian, some of the crazy things you and I did, and yet we survived. All because of God's mercy. In verse 3, I'm going to get to the interesting part in a minute. How happy are those who uphold justice? Well, you see, in America, there's not a lot of happy people. But that's just a minority. There's a lot of real happy people. In fact, I saw uh, there's a dem democratic debate. Watch it tonight. You'll find out where everybody's gone crazy. It's at 9 o'clock. And listen to the stupid ideas that they have. They want to give, repo, they want to give uh, reparations to gay people because they feel sorry that years ago they were married and they couldn't claim the taxes like the married people could. So they want to go back and pray, pay reparations. $65 million, they want to give them in tax returns. That's Elizabeth Warren's idea. Cuckoo! And the reason, I, I don't want to get on my soapbox on this, okay? But I just want to say this. The one reason why they're doing what they're doing, and, and they want slavery, reprobations, is because they don't have the black vote anymore. They don't have the Spanish vote anymore. They don't have the women's vote anymore. And they don't have votes. That's why they're doing everything that they're doing. 
Where's all the uproar of the kids in cages? When Obama had them, and they were in worse conditions than what they are now. Where were they? Where was their voices? But thank God we have voices that are stepping up and not, and not just accepting everything, like the drag queen thing. My first comment was, yeah, they look like they've been dragged. Hello. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hey, I'm afraid. I, I have, a, I have a, a right to speak. I have, I have my, my Bill of Rights, too, you know. I'm a, I'm a citizen. I can, I can say what I want to say. The main, people don't like it, but that's too bad. Well, they're forcing me to like things that I don't like. But happy are those who uphold justice. Practice righteousness at all times. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to me with your salvation. Good, I'm going to get to the good parts pretty soon. Well, it's all good. So that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, rejoice in the joy of your nation, and boast about your heritage. Both we and our fathers have sinned. We have gone astray and have acted wickedly. Ooh. Now he's bringing it home. He's trying to get to the root of it, of what has been taking place. Our fathers in Egypt did not grasp the significance of your wonderful works or remember your many acts of faithful love. That's what happens to a people when everything starts going right. When you're blessed, when you're fed, all your needs are met, you're doing good, finances are increasing. What happens a lot of times, people forget God. Look at America. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but and I might have mentioned it once or twice. New Bedford, when they, when they were first colonizing the area, used to pay missionaries to go out and evangelize. Can you imagine that? New Bedford used to pay the, the city, the, the town, the, the colony used to pay missionaries to go out into the villages and to the Indians and preach the gospel. Now you go out and preach the gospel, they arrest you. You're going to go before a judge, and now you're going to spend money to defend yourself. Something's changed. Hello? It says, instead they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. When they were by the Red Sea and they looked and saw Pharaoh coming, what was their attitude? Was their attitude this? Oh boy, God's going to show himself strong. He brought us this far. He's not going to let us down now. Praise God, I can't wait to see what God's going to do to the enemy. No. Stone him! Stone him! Where's that Moses? Stone him! He brought us to the sea so that we could be drowned. We have no place to go and Pharaoh's going to come and kill us all. Stone him! Because fear said, they let fear set in. They let the situation control them rather than controlling the situation. Mm -hmm. Don't let your situation control you. You control the situation. Yet he saved them because they were great, because they were just wonderful. Oh, they just, you know, they just, they just dumb people. They don't know any better. So God, just, no. He saved them because of his name. Because of his authority. Come on, somebody. He remembered the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not a covenant breaker. And for his great namesake, to make his power known, Ooh. 
Next verse, please. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. Wow. That'd be something I'd love to see. And I'll tell you, you know, I know how they did it when they did the Ten Commandments with um, Cecil, Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments with a Charlton Heston movie. You know how they made that water separate? They used jello. Mm hmm. I saw a documentary on it one time. It said they used jello. And trickery of the cameras and all that stuff. You know, but even back then in 1955, 56, they made that movie. So it was pretty cool. Next verse, please. He saved them from the hand of the adversary. He redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Always remember, behind the attacks that you go through and I go through, there's an adversary. The Bible says that he, wa he walks throughout the whole earth seeking, he's looking for whom he may devour. He's looking He's seeking it out. He's just not going by and randomly choosing. No, he's seeking out. He's looking for the weak one. He's looking for the compromising one. He's looking for the grumbler and the complainer. That's who he's going to get a hold of. Come on, somebody. Next verse, please. Water covered their foes. Not one of them remained. Oh, they were singing and dancing after that. Next verse. When they believed his promises and sang his praises. Oh, when the victory comes, oh boy, we'll sing and praise Jesus. You know, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when you go through the rough time, I don't feel like singing. I don't feel like dancing. I just don't feel like it. That's the time you need to. Because it doesn't go by how you feel. It goes by what you know. I know in whom I have believed in. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until that day. So don't let your circumstances control you. Control your circumstances. Next verse, please. They soon forgot his works and would not wait for his counsel. Oh, by the way, how did God do that? How did he do that? Did he write, did he write, uh, did he give smoke signals, you know, started a fire and put smoke signals up and everybody read it? How, how did he do that? How did he counsel? How did he, how did he speak to the people? Huh? Through his servants. And see, that's one of the things that America and the American church has lost. They take it as the preacher speaking, but they don't take it as the Lord is speaking through the preacher. Come on, somebody. And that may be one of the reasons why this, the anointing is not in many churches today. Because men are speaking what's, what they want to speak. They want to speak smooth things. They want you to feel fluffy and nuffy and cuffy. They want you to feel nice. Don't you feel nice? I feel good going to church. Don't you feel good? I feel good. Oh, yeah. Tell me what I need. Tell me what I want to hear. Don't tell me what I need to hear. Hello. Next verse, please. They were seized with craving in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. Wow. They tested 
God in the desert. Well, God, where are you? Where's our water? We don't have water. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. Come on. So what God did in the wilderness, he rained down manna from heaven. Right? And what happens to people when God supplies some things to them? They get used to it. Then we start complaining. God, is that all you got? Except this manna every day. We got manna every day. Manna, 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 manna. Ain't you got a bigger menu than just manna? We want quail. We want some meat. We're not vegetarians. We're not vegans. We want some meat. Complain, complain, complain. I'm trying to set the stage for you to understand what's happening. Complain, complain, complain. God said, okay. You want quail? I'm going to give you. He sent so much quail that they were throwing it up. So much quail that they got sick of it. Can I tell you that's what's happening in a lot of churches today. They don't want the old paths. Give us the new paths. Give us the new things. Give us the, give us the world and Jesus together. We want it both ways. We don't want no preaching of no ugly, blood-stained cross. We don't want that. We don't want no sacrifice. We don't want to have to crucify our flesh. We want to be blessed. Next verse. He gave them what they asked for. The Bible says, for in the last days many shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Devils. He gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease among them. You're going to see why in a minute. Why God sent. God, look what it says. He sent a wasting disease. Don't tell me he's a God. He's not a God of judgment. You've got to read your Bible. Yes, we're to have mercy. And we pray for mercy. In fact, if it wasn't for Moses begging for mercy, God would have wiped them all out. Just killed all of them. Next verse. In the camp, they were envious of Moses and of Aaron. What was the attitude of the people? What was their attitude? Does anyone know? Their attitude was this. Who does Moses and Aaron think they are? God speaks to us too. Remember? You take too much on yourself, Moses. God speaks to us too. We're, we're, we're holy too, Moses. I think you're lifting yourself up, Moses. Aaron? I call Aaron a weak leader. Aaron was a weak leader. He was, he was a people pleaser. 
And I'm glad that some of you are speaking out and you're seeing the repercussions of your speaking out. I'm glad. Because Jesus said, you know, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And now you know, sometimes I'll say something and people don't like it and they'll leave and they'll come back. Well, I'm sorry, I can't help that. I'm not here to intentionally hurt anybody or intentionally hurt someone's feelings, but I'm going to speak the truth. If the shoe don't, if the shoe fits, wear it, and if it don't, give it to your neighbor. <laughs> Look what it says. The Lord's holy one. What's it saying here? There was a lack of respect for the leadership. Can I tell you that's what's happening in a lot of churches across America today? There's a lack of, of respect for leaders. Because, hey, they're our buddy, they're our friend, you know. Hey, you know. Pastor goes water skiing with us, you know, and he's got tattoos all over and wears his shorts and all that stuff. Now that's one extreme, but then there's the old, there's the old, uh, old extreme too, where a guy, a pastor that I knew, used to mow his lawn in a three-piece suit <laughs> because they were so rigid. Then now you got the soul loose on this side. Whatever happened to balance? No one would ever step behind a pulpit without a tie on. And if you didn't have a tie on, you didn't get to preach. They, I guess they thought the anointing was in the tie. Mm -hmm. Next verse, please. We've got to get through this. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It covered the assembly of Abram. Imagine that. They, God brought judgment. Opened up the earth and swallowed them right up. The whole tents, everything, everybody, the whole family. That was swift judgment. Next verse. Fire blazed throughout their assembly. Flames consumed the wicked. Hmm. Notice these were his people too, by the way. Now he calls them wicked. <clears throat> At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped the cast metal image. Aaron was the one that fashioned it. Then when, when he was confronted by Moses, know what he said? Oh, we took the gold, threw it in the fire, and it came out. Think about that. How stupid is that, right? He lied. Aaron was a, le he was a weak leader by himself. I call him the first pastor of the seeker-friendly church in the Bible. A seeker-friendly church is what, what they do is they give the people what they want rather than what they need. They said, make us a God that we can worship. For as this Moses going up and get the word of God, we don't know what's happened to him. He's been gone 30 days. We don't know what's happened to him. Make us a God that we can worship. Now, what they were actually saying is, make us a God so that we can worship Jehovah God through that idol. Think about it. Next verse. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating ox. Huh? Sad. In other words, they're exchanging their glory for shame. Those that were created in the image of God, now they're made into the image of a cre creation, a creature, creature. Next verse. They forgot God, their Savior, who did great things in Egypt. Now remember, these are people. Am I talking to people today? You all are people, I hope, right? Next verse, please. We're getting to the pot. That's good. Wonderful works in the land of Ham are inspiring deeds at the Red Sea. So he said he would have destroyed them if Moses... 
his chosen one had not stood before him in the breach to turn his wrath away from destroying them. I just mentioned that before. They despise the pleasant land. Look at this. They despise. These are people that saw the miracle. That walked through the Red Sea. They saw the supernatural act of God that by night was a pillar of fire that stopped Pharaoh from coming closer to them. And it was a cloud by day to keep them cool as they journeyed. They saw them and the cloud moved with them. Think about it. And at night, the, the fire would, would separate the enemy from them so he couldn't, they couldn't attack him. Till all of Israel crossed the Red Sea. They saw that. That's like if you saw an enemy coming and we, we ran to the end of New Bedford and you know from here to Martha's Vineyard, you saw the sea open up. God said, run, and he just ran through it. They saw that miracle. But look, they despised the pleasant land and did not believe his promises. These were his people. These were the chosen ones of Israel. They despised the pleasant land, the land of milk and honey that God promised he was going to take them to. They were on the brink of going there. They were almost there. And they didn't believe his promises. Can I tell you, the church today is in that same realm. They don't believe the promise of the return of Christ. They don't believe in the rapture anymore, many of them. They believe we're going to win the world for Jesus and that we're going to turn the world back over to Jesus and give it to him, and then he's going to come. That's not going to happen. I don't know what Bible they're reading, but my Bible tells me well, it's not going to get better. You know, they think that, oh, they're going to, uh, they're going to infiltrate the governments and stuff like that in the world. You know, and they're going to change it to Christian principles and, you know, and then uh, we're going to get people saved and then we're going to take this, all of this and bring it up to the Lord and then he's going to come back. Ain't going to happen. My Bible tells me things are going to wax worse and worse. There shall be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Come on, somebody. The Bible talks about this all the time of the end times, what's going to happen and the, and the Antichrist spirit coming and it's not going to get better. I'm sorry, Trump's not going to make it better. He's going to make it tolerable for, for, us, for us righteous Christian, Christians that are living, but after he's done, we don't know who's going to get in there that can unravel the whole thing. I believe this is a time of God's mercy on America to give us an opportunity to go out and witness and go out and tell people about Jesus. Because there may come a time when we become like Russia where you cannot preach the gospel freely. Or like China, you cannot preach the gospel they have to covertly take their Bibles with them when they go to the secret meeting places in China. I was there in China. I was in Shenzhen. You carry a Bible like this and out in the open and the authorities catch you, automatic two-year prison term just for having the Bible. You cannot convert a national Chinese. If I went there to start a church, I could only have people in the church that were foreigners that made China their home or they're in business there and they're, they're staying there. I can, I can talk to them and have them come to my church, but no nationals can come. They have to go to the government church. And the government church tells the pastor what to say and when to say what they will say, what they want. And look at the freedom you have. You came here today, you drove here today, you walked here today, you came into this church free. Can you imagine... Militia stopping you and asking you where you're heading. What, what is that in your hand? Why do you have that? Don't you know that's a felony? That's, a, that's an arrest. You, you can go to jail for that? Next one. Oh, boy. They grumbled in their apartments and their homes. That's what the tents were. That was their homes. They grumbled 
in their tents and did not listen to the Lord's voice. I want to tell you, this is the, when you get in this condition, boy, you better watch out. If it wasn't for the Lord's mercy, we'd all be consumed. Next verse. So he raised his hand against them with an oath that he would make them fall in the desert. And he did. Next verse. And would disperse their descendants among the nations, scattering them throughout the lands. Isn't that the truth? Look at the Holocaust. Israel just became a nation in 1948. They didn't have a homeland. Scattered throughout the whole earth. But now, Israelis from all over the world are migrating back to Israel. I read something uh, the other day, I don't know if you heard about this, that Israel has invented a shot that you can take that cures 90% of all the cancers that are out there. One-time shot. Boy, is that going to make a lot of companies angry. They're going to lose their money on the pills. They're going to lose their money on medication. They're going to lose their, their uh, money on radiation and chemotherapy. Next verse. This is the one I want to show you right now, okay? They align themselves with Baal of Peor. They align themselves with Baal of Peor. How did they do that? They did that with Balaam. Remember Balaam? Who remembers Balaam? Raise your hand if you remember Balaam. I got one nod and no one's... No one's Nobody knows about Balaam in the Bible? Okay, there's two over there. One shaking head, two. I see one over there. Okay, I'll say this. Remember the talk, talking donkey? Not on TV. Not, no, not, not Francis the talking mule. I'm not talking about him. <laughs> when God supernaturally gave a donkey the ability to speak in a man's voice, huh? that's in the Bible. I won't say it and quote it like the, like the Bible does because it sounds kind of funny. But They aligned themselves with Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. Can I tell you that's what's happening in the church today? They're aligning themselves up with Baal of Peor. I wish I had my notes. They ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. In other words, they started to slowly turn away from God, the promises, all that God had given them, their, cov excuse me, their covenants that God made with them. They begin to turn away from that and start to serve Baal. You know what Baal means? He was the god of weather and of rain. Now watch this. Of money, finances, prosperity. Come on, somebody. Don't tell me the church today is not running after prosperity. Just turn your TV on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I, I feel a prophecy coming on for something. And you send me a thousand dollars. Don't tell me they ain't, there's not. 
merchandise in the gospel. The next time you turn that TV on and they say, Oh, sow your seed. Sow your seed of a thousand dollars. Sow right here. And God will give you a hundredfold blessing. Call them up. And when they answer and they say, Oh, oh, you wanna you wanna say, you wanna sow the seed of a thousand? Say, no, I want you to send it to me so you can get the hundredfold blessing. You know what you're gonna hear? Boop. Hello. They align themselves. In other words, they were, going, they were going straight. But then they aligned themselves to the ways of Baal. Now, one thing about Baal, let me tell you something. Baal had their false prophets. Remind you of anybody? Did it remind you of Elijah? And he was out on Mount Carmel. Now, Mount Carmel in Israel is a very high mountain. And they used to go up to this mountain because that was where they believed that Baal, their God, resided. They worship this idol, Baal. Now, I know somebody ain't going to like this on Facebook, but I'm sorry. We've got a church over here. Right over here. Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel was a pagan god mountain. And Our Lady is an idol. They just changed the names. But it's the same thing. Why, why would you have Our Lady, if you will, on Mount Carmel? A pagan mountain where paganism was. And God called Elijah and he says, he went up there and there was 400 prophets of Baal. There was another 400 prophets. There was like 800 different prophets up there. For this false God. Let me tell you, people will throng to false prophets. Don't believe me? Can't even get a bunch of Christians together and a bunch of churches to help build our church over there. But let me become a Jehovah Witness and in one weekend we can have a whole building erected. Hello? That big Jehovah Witness building on County Street was built in one weekend. It was over 500 workers. They worked 24-7. I'm not counting about the piping and the, the foundation. That was already done. But to, to erect that building, put it up, I was amazed. I said, boy, what unity. No wonder God confounded all the languages. Because he said if, we didn't conf if he didn't confound the languages, we could do almost anything. And they sacrificed offerings. They ate the sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. Wow. Next verse. Twenty nine. Could I have verse twenty nine? Okay. Verse thirty. A plague broke out against them. Where do we find that? Do me a favor. I might make this into two studies. Go to Numbers chapter twenty five. Is it 25? Hold on. Numbers. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> let me just read it out. I'm going to just read it along. You, and Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. In other words, they were starting to intermingle. The saved with the unsaved. And they called the people unto sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat. What happened to my mic? It got, it got off and loud off all of a sudden. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down unto their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. You see that? Israel joined himself unto the Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away. And what happens is, is that they go into a tent, and one of the servants of Moses takes a javelin and throws it right through the guy. They were committing fornication right there. Kills both of them. And the plague was stayed. God's anger was turned. I think it was, was it 20... How many thousand would were killed? Huh? Verse 9. And those that died in the plague were 24,000. 24,000. It could have been more, but they, some repented. Some turned away. The plague was stayed. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10.8 for a moment. I'm trying to do the best I can without my notes. Let us not commit sexual immorality. As some of them did, and in a single day, 23,000 people fell dead. Verse 9. Let us not tempt Christ as some of them did and were destroyed by snakes. Let's try verse 10. I don't, know how, I don't have my notes again. Nor should we complain as some of them did and were killed by the destroyer. You mean God allowed that to happen to his people? His covenant people. They broke covenant with him. God didn't break covenant with them. They broke covenant with him. They were complainers. What do you hear the new newfangled church today complaining about? All oh, the preaching, all oh, the music, all oh, this or oh, that, oh, blah, blah, blah. They don't have this, they don't have that. So now we have entertainment centers. Some of the large churches now, they have automobiles on the platform. They have clowns. They have had a circus with elephants on the platform. Oh, yeah. I'm not kidding you. You go to New York City, you've got a church from Hillsong with gay choir, choir directors. Hello. People are going to church for the music. Remember that song, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Because it's all about you, not about the music. But we've turned it into a giant concert. We've complained, we don't like the old church. We don't like, they don't have all the, all the facilities and they don't have all the programs. Nang, 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 nang. Our youth need more. So we bring in the lights and the smoke. We blacken the, 
Think about this. We blacken the platform. The Bible says God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Let's take down anything religious. Take down the cross. Take down, get rid of the pulpit. Get a table with a cup of coffee on it. Sit down with a pair of ripped jeans. Let's make the people feel like we're one of you. Well, if we're all weak, well, I can go along with that as long as you get the same judgment that I get. When you stand before God, you're responsible for the same things I'm responsible for. When I stand before God to give him an account of whether I preach the truth to you or not. You're going to get the same judgment? You want the same judgment as me? I'm accountable for all of you. You want that same responsibility? Fine, we're equal. Not so. Not so. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm not. But again, they complain, so they come out with these newfangled churches, giving the people what they want. People flock to them. Think about it. People flock to it. People didn't flock to Jesus. Oh, they flocked to Jesus when they wanted something. They flocked to Jesus when they wanted loaves and fishes. Hey, Joe, man, guess what? There's a Messiah over here. He's providing free food. I know you like free food, right? Come on, <laughs> come on. Free, free buffets, come on. Joe loves bu free buffets, you know. But you know what I'm saying? Follow Jesus for the loaves and fishes, but when it comes time to go to Gethsemane and to stand with him when the enemy's coming to attack him, guess what? The Bible says that all forsook him. So we see where those seeds fell. They complained. Oh, you don't want to stay in this church. Go to that church over there. They got everything going, man. Everything's grooving over there. They got it all together. Do they? Find out what their missions budget is. I don't even think they know what a missions budget is. Oh, they have a missions budget for their church for the city. Because they have a mission. But I can tell you one thing right now. This preacher right here is not for sale. I'd rather close up my church and go do something else than rather cave to that Baal, pure, false worship, false prophets that are preaching the lies. Oh, come on. I could fill this place right up. I could fill this place up. Joe, in a year, I could fill this up. With your mind and, and my, my good looks. What a team. All I got to do is just... just do this. Be positive. Don't be negative. Your best life is now. But you got to be positive. Don't be negative. God loves everybody. Oh, we have all kind of debauchery in our church. We have all kind of immorality in the church. It's okay. God loves everybody. God's grace covers it all. You don't need to confess your sins anymore because even though you sin, grace covers it all. Just go have fun. I know a brother, I'm not going to mention his name, came to me one day, told me, he said, you know what? I, I met I met my wife at another church before I, before he, you know I, I talked to him here. And he said, uh, 
I, I saw my wife, you know, my wife-to-be. He says, I want to take her on a date. You know what the pastor gave him? A quart of whiskey. He said, here, go enjoy yourself. Hello? Think about that. A pastor gave him a quart of whiskey or a bottle of whiskey, a big bottle of whiskey. He said, here, go enjoy your date. What do you think is going to be the judgment on that pastor when he stands before Jesus? But see, they're not thinking about that because they're just thinking about here and now. Let's try one more verse, see where where we're going, if it continues. Like I said, I don't have my notes, so. Okay, now. The story that you just read about Baal and Peor and all this stuff and that we were reading in, in, in Psalm 106, he says, now these things happen to them. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul speaking here. As examples. Because some people say, well, you know, Pastor, that's the Old Testament. You know, Old Testament don't have no, no bearing on us now. We're in New Testament. And they were written as a warning to, and the Apostle Paul includes himself, us. He didn't say y'all, although some people thought he was southern when he said in Romans, I reckon y'all. But he says they're warning to us on whom the end of the ages have come. He says it's a warning to you and I of what's going to take place. What's going to take place? Number one, people are going to stop believing the promises of God. Number two, they're going to line themselves up with false prophets. Come on, somebody. Number three, they're going to go astray, and the destroyer is going to come and destroy them. But I believe, I believe that there's a remnant. What did the prophet Elijah write? He got all upset when he killed all those prophets of Baal and Jezebel. Read about Jezebel in the Bible? You can read about her in 1 Kings. Had a husband, Ahab. He was a weak leader also. Wife had a very dominating spirit. Overstepped the rules, overstepped authority. Tell me you don't see that today. When Jezebel found out that Elijah had slain all of her prophets, she made a decree. Now, her husband was the king, but she made the decree, go out and kill Elijah. So he ran. He went and hid himself under a, uh, under a juniper tree, I think it was. I forget what it was. But he's under that tree, and he's now he's complaining, Lord, God, he said, I'm the only one left, and there's no one here, right? You know, no one there. And the Lord spoke to him and says, look, I've got 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. That's a remnant. Can I tell you, God has a remnant? A remnant of believers that will not forsake his promises, will not forsake his way, will not go the way of Baal or Peor, will not go to the false gods that are being created out there today. Come on. I could tell you story after story of false prophets that are out there and deceiving our youth. You ever hear a slosh fest? You know what it means to get sloshed? Slosh fest. Church in Redding, California. Some 25, 30,000, I don't know how big they are. They have slosh fest. And all the youth go there and they, they have a big long line and they, they put this anointing on them where they act drunk. 
this drunkenness comes on them, and they're falling all over the place, and they're like, oh, 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 make all kind of funny noises. Is that what our youth need? You need to go get drunk? Doesn't the Bible say be sober? Be vigilant for the devil is seeking whom he may devour? And yet they're falling all over, going to these, these drunk fests? And John Crowder, I don't know if you ever heard of John Crowder. Him and his friend, they, they say, oh, you know, we want, I'm going to do a little token on the Holy Ghost. And his friend's laughing. Ha, 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 ha. He says, yeah, you go in your pocket, you take out a joint, you know, uh, of the Holy Ghost. You, you just get high on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you just feel the glory. They have thousands of youth following them. They're sheep without a shepherd. Because mommy and daddy are too afraid to correct their children. Then mommy and daddy wonder why the, the, the kids are going to hell in a handbasket. They don't show them what's right. Thank God you do. It's, not, it's hard sometimes. And they come against you and they... They fight you. But I'd rather have them fight you than fight the devil. I'd hate to get the phone call saying, so-and-so son overdosed. So-and-so's daughter overdosed. Why? Because we spoil our children and try to give them everything that we could not have ourselves and you're ruining their lives. Because when they get older and they find out that they can't have everything they want, they'll go out and steal it. Come on. That's why pastors don't give, real pastors don't give you what you want. They give you what you need. I can't believe it's already eight, almost 8.30. But I want to show you what's happening. There's a departure. There's a departure from the right paths, from the old paths. And I'm not talking about we have to sing, Shall we gather at the river? The beautiful, the beautiful river. I'm not saying that. It is a nice song. I'll come to the church in the wild wood. Put your contribution in the pail. <laughs> I'm not talking about those old things. We do new songs. But songs with meaning. Tell me, tell me if this song is worshiping God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Is that worship? Who cares what he calls you? I am, a I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. That's not worship. That has nothing to do with worship. It has nothing to do with praise. You hear the word praise you, Lord, in there? No. You have called me friend. I'm important. You know, God calls me friend. I'm happy now. God is my friend. What happens is you begin to minimize who God is when you make him too familiar. And that's why the church has lost the fear of God. I would love to put you down south. Somewhere in Louisiana area, Oklahoma area. And see one of those tornadoes touch down or one of those lightning storms they have out there. And the, and the, the thunder, that, that, that thunder booms, it shakes everything that you have. And puts you right in the middle of that. 
you'll be fear and shaking in your boots. And that's just a storm. How about Almighty God? Almighty God. The Bible says to fear him in a reverence. Fear him for who he is and what he can do. Fear him. Where's the fear of God? Yet in the churches, what do we have today? I can't do it all by myself. If I have a... Come tell me, let me story about a... That's not my gifting. Yo, 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 yo. Well, at least we're not like down south either, you know. They're singing, I don't care if it rains or freezes as long as I have my plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. But that's what's happening. I mean, it's crazy stuff going on. And, 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 and people are like lambs to the slaughter. Just let me go see what's going on. And they go, oh, yeah, I like this. Yeah, I, I really like this. No conviction. No preaching about sin. No preaching about hell. And they tell you, don't judge and... I'm going to have to close because it's 8.30. I could go on and on, but I know you, you all get tired. You know, you want to go home and stuff. See, see, my, my Bible studies, when I, was, when I was in church, and I, was, I, wasn't, well, I was in leadership, I was an elder, but, you know, we, we had three-hour Bible studies on Wednesday night. Get there at 7, leave at 10. We loved it. Oh, I wanted to be there. We went through the book of Colossians, just four chapters. It took us uh, a year and a half. In depth. Loved it. Hey, you preach an hour and a half on people. <laughs> oh, a soccer tournament tonight. The Bruins are playing tonight. Got to get home. Monday night football. Can't come to prayer. Come on. It's true. They follow the way of, they've forsaken the covenants that God said. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Let me tell you something. I, I forget who the preacher was, and I'm going to close with this, I promise. He, I, think it was, I think it was Jonathan Edwards. He preached the message and he said, Lord, those that are committing sin that are in the church, dangle them over the flames of hell that they may feel the fiery furnace that they're heading toward. He preached the message, sinners in the hands of an angry God. And he took his paper, he had a sermon, and he just read it. He was standing there reading it, just reading. If you ever go online, you can get a sermon and read it. He just read it. You just read it, go, oh, that's no big deal. But when it was anointed by the Holy Ghost, he just started reading about sinners being in the hands of the angry God. And as he was reading it, people were jumping over the pews in terror, running to the altar, getting saved, repenting of their sins. Hello? Where's that today? 
I'm, I'm leaving the church. Pastor hurt my feelings. He spoke that message. It was like he was speaking it just to me, just to me. How do I know? I don't know what's going on. If God is speaking to you, guess what? It's the Holy Ghost. It ain't me. So I'm going to encourage you. Don't forsake the past. Don't go in the way of the destroyer. Don't forsake the promises of God. Keep strong in the Lord. Stay firm in the Lord. Don't look to the left or to the right. You know, it's like, I think it was Thomas Brooks, great Puritan preacher. He said this, and I'll leave you with this quote. He that plays with Satan's bait shall soon be led by Satan's hook. You keep playing, eventually you're going to get hooked. And when you get hooked, you know when, he, when a fish, you get a fish and you, you, you set that hook, it's all over. Unless the line breaks. But if you get a strong line and, and that, that fish is hooked, man, and that hook is set, man, you got them. And that's what the enemy wants to do to a lot of us today. But I want to encourage you, have faith in God. Believe in the promises of God. Believe that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what you go through in life, no matter what storm you face, can I tell you, he's in the boat with you. He's right there in that boat with you. The waves may come in and you may see that boat sinking. You may think that boat's going to sink, but the Savior's right in that boat with you. You may feel like you're going to go through the fire, but let me tell you, like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, he's in the fire with you. So whatever emotional feelings you're going through, whatever situations you're going through, whatever feelings you're having about what am I going to do next, just be led by the Spirit of God. Just be led by the Spirit of God. Don't forsake the covenants. Be in church as often as you can. Make it a joy to come to church. Invite somebody to come with you. Let them experience the same joy and the same feeling and the same emotion that you're feeling when you come to the altar and you begin to worship God. I tell you, my heart gets touched when I see people come to this altar and just weep before the Lord. That, that, that tells me, God, you're moving. God, you're doing something in that person's life. Let's get that back. Let's get that back again. Let's get it, let's get it back so when, when we have services, if the Spirit of God moves, maybe there'll be just a little bit of the Word preached, but I believe in this. I really do. I don't believe the Spirit moves and then tosses the Word aside. I don't believe that. I believe He is here to lift up the Word. Holy Spirit never will take this Word and toss it aside. That's when you get in trouble. That's when Jim Jones got in trouble and took the Bible and threw it out and said, we don't need this anymore. He was a Pentecostal Assembly of God preacher. Yes, sir. And he started getting puffed up in pride and arrogance, thinking he knew more than the Word. And finally, the day came, he threw across his Bible aside, said, we don't need that anymore. Just listen to the revelation God gives me. You know what happened then. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't follow the, the God of, of Baal. Still alive today, that God. They didn't die. That spirit's still alive. That's behind it. See, the things that they sacrificed, they sacrificed the demon. Maybe I'll finish this message next week. But don't fall prey. Follow somebody that's living it. Follow somebody who's preaching with the anointing. Follow somebody that's going to not, not give you the watered-down version. We're going to speak the truth to you in love. Amen? Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. I pray, God, that you will, by your Spirit, lead and guide us, Lord, into the truth. We want truth. Not half truth, but we want truth. We want your Holy Spirit to be with us. We want to be able to sense your presence, Lord. But when we come into your presence, you said you are light, and your light will expose things in our hearts, Lord. Help us to get right with you. Help us to confess those things that need to be confessed. 
Help us to make sure that we're right with you. So when we come into this place, this sanctuary, this house of worship, this is your house, God. It's not my house. It's not their house. It's your house, God. And you sanctified this place. You set this, pot, this place apart. That's why when people come here, they feel the presence of God. Because you set it, not because of a man, not because of music, not because of anything. It's because you set it aside as your sanctuary. Come and seek your face to change us, to mold us, and to shape us into the image of your dear son. Thank you, Father, for calling me to this little church. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'd rather have what we have than to have thousands that are just playing the game, just being satisfied in the flesh. But Lord, you're, you're helping us to crucify the flesh every day, to, to stand in your presence, Lord. That's all that really I really care about, Lord. Seeing you glorify for his glory, Christian assembly. We thank you and we praise you. Now give us traveling mercies as we go and keep us till we come together again on Sunday morning. Lord, I pray that your people will come with an expectation. They will come with an anticipation. They will come filled up with the Holy Ghost. Lord, they'll come to these altars and pray and praise and worship, Father, God, and seek your face. And that, Lord, you'll speak to us and make a visitation here on a Sunday morning like never before. We want more, and you want more of us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, all God's people said, amen. God bless you tonight.